Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This episode, we'll be discussing joy, another fruit of the Spirit. While some fruits of the Spirit aren't mentioned by name very often in the scriptures, joy is. In fact, if you asked me to list every quote in the Bible to do with joy, this episode would be hours long. However, although each of these verses says important things about joy, they tend to fall into a few categories. First is the kind of verse that describes a time of great celebration, usually after a battle of some kind in the Old Testament. 1 Chronicles 12.40 is a good example of this. Second is the kind that lists joy as a command of the Lord, when he commands his people to be joyful, or scolds or even threatens to punish them for not being joyful, such as Deuteronomy 28.47. Third is the type of verse that refers to joy as a preference or a source of happiness. Some refer to the Lord as a source of joy, while some refer to foolish people deriving joy from bad things, like Proverbs 15.21. So what does joy mean, exactly? How do people usually use the word? Well, to start with, it doesn't mean pleasure. People say, for example, that the taste of chocolate is a pleasure, but it's not a joy. Pleasure and joy are different things. Pleasure is what happens when you see, hear, taste, feel, or smell something pleasant, like the scent of a rose, for example. It only lasts until you put the rose down or until the smell wears off. The taste of chocolate is the same way. It only lasts until you're out of chocolate. Pleasure is very intense, but very short-lived. Joy doesn't come from the senses. It's a feeling of inner delight and gladness, which makes you feel better regardless of your circumstances, heightening your appreciation of good times, and softening the blow of tragedies and suffering. It's not as intense as pleasure is, but it lasts much longer, and is therefore more useful. For example, there's no way you could have enough pleasure to get you through a whole workday with a smile on your face, but joy can do it. Now, of course, certain types of pleasure can prompt some joy in you. For example, the rose could make you feel deeply joyful because it could remind you of the rose garden your mother had, and that can make you feel better about the world for a while, so these two things aren't opposites. But you don't usually get both at once. Most of the time, joy comes from doing things that aren't exactly pleasant, or from hope, one of the virtues which I'll be touching on later. However, these Bible verses seem to indicate that joy is even more than just this, especially the ones in category 2. Often they speak of being joyful to the Lord with music and song, and this indicates that at least part of joy is gratitude. From these verses, I'm convinced that joy is part hope, part gratitude, part deeper appreciation for the good things we have, useful for giving us the strength to go on through times of trouble, even when it isn't totally fulfilling. These are all things we need to deal with hard times and can benefit from, even when times aren't so hard, so I can see why God would want us to have this particular fruit of the Spirit. Pleasure may be nice and strong when we feel it, but it doesn't last, and if we want to keep being cheered up by it, we need to keep doing pleasurable things again and again. That's a waste of time, and the more we do that to ourselves, the harder it is to stop until we're enslaved to self-pleasure. That's why it's so important to have joy, an inner feeling that lasts through hard times, and which we don't need to keep feeding into. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.